So uh, my name's Orlando. Um, on behalf of the SBDC, we want to welcome everyone. If you don't know uh, about the S SBDC, the SBDC actually provides no-cost consulting for um, small businesses. Uh, they are a resource partner with the SBA. So their goal is to actually help businesses uh, grow, scale, go to the next level. So anything that you may need when it comes to uh, marketing, finance, uh, government contracting with their PTAC, um, they're actually willing to assist and help you with anything that you may need. Um, before we uh, go forward and move forward, uh, one of the things that Karen likes to suggest is uh, uh, put on the uh, Q&A your business, uh, your name, what it entails, what it does, and so forth. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. We want to thank uh, Brianna for putting all of this together, for assisting us, for helping us, uh, for going above and beyond. Great picture, by the way, Brianna. Uh, love the smile. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. And before we hear from the, uh, the panelists, let me go ahead and get the uh, presentation up uh, so they can actually share. So slide. So we're gonna be talking about guerrilla marketing right now. So before we go ahead and get, and get started, I'm gonna give uh, Daniel an opportunity to share. And just as an FYI, Daniel's gonna be sharing some of his experience and so forth but he does have a, a hard stop. He does have a, a client that he's actually meeting with, but uh, I do have his email up so you can definitely contact him. So Daniel, take it away. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Barrow. Uh, my company is Creative Particle. Basically in a nutshell, what we are is, uh, we are a video production company um, by name, but really what we try to do is offer both video production and also the benefits of what a bigger ad agency or branding agency would offer which is strategy so that's basically uh our first foot forward in 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 the um, in the business is before we do any kind of video production we always talk to our clients about video strategy what they need video for and the kind of business results they're looking for in terms of video and from there we kind of reverse engineer what kind of video content do they need so we we service small and medium-sized businesses. We do B2B, B2C, and corporate. We handle a lot of e-commerce clients and retail clients as well in terms of creating the types of video content that's going to help them and their customers through the customer buying journey. All right. So, so thank you, Daniel. Uh, Karen, I know you're enjoying lunch because we're like going from webinar to webinar to work to work, and um, I'm in a different spot today. But uh, go ahead, Karen. Hi, my name is Dr. Karen Vieira. I'm owner of the Mad Writers. We are a company of scientists and doctors. We work for mostly pharma, healthcare, dietary supplements, medical device, health and wellness type businesses. But um, due to Orlando's prompting many years ago, we've kind of diversified and done some work outside of those fields. And uh, we totally understand content. We understand growth hacking. We understand guerrilla marketing, all of that and more. That's how I've grown my business. That's how I've helped my clients grow their businesses. And I hope that I'm able to share some stuff today to help you grow your business. Like Orlando said, put your business in the Q&A and that way we can address um, specific ideas that might you know, be very specific to you. And if you're having specific problems or you have very specific questions in terms of how you can grow and what kind of marketing to use, please go ahead and enter it. Don't wait for us to say this is the Q&A period because we notoriously have so much to share that our Q&A period may happen at like 2.15. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the main things that we may extend a little bit, but um, the main goal for us is to make sure that we give you and provide as much information. Uh, a lot of you've seen me, Orlando Espinosa with m and Media. We design, develop, and um, implement outreach programs for municipalities, government agencies, and, and, and nonprofit organizations to help them market their brand through, um, through actually educational programs such as these. Uh, the, the one thing that we will tell you when it comes to guerrilla marketing, um, there's a lot of content today that we actually have, but once again, we're just adding content so that when you do receive the, e um, the email with the presentation, that you have something that you can go over, that you can read, that you can actually access because we all know everybody learns differently. So we're, we're more than happy to assist and, and help you. Now, one of the things that, that guerrilla marketing is, 
is a form of marketing that's very unconventional, that pretty much there isn't a rhyme or reason to it, what you can and cannot do. This actually has endless possibilities for businesses to actually scale, especially for, for everyone that you're doing the online thing right now. Um, it's about you know a generating buzz to turn something that's virtual, and we will be giving you some examples and so forth, um, but it's trying to figure out how do you engage and educate your customers uh, rather than to sell to them, because everything is sell, 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 but right now with guerrilla marketing, it's about build, build, build. This normally, um, I've done this presentation in the past, and I've flown solo, but I, I wanted to go ahead and bring, you know, the expertise of, of both Daniel and, and, and Karen. Um, but um, we normally do this for, for two, um, two hours, I think, Brianna, we've done it in the past two and a half hours. Because people have a lot of questions. But the great thing about this is, is that you have to give yourself permission to do something different. And the great thing about uh, guerrilla marketing is that it's, uh, our, it's outrageously inexpensive. It doesn't cost a lot. You just have to be creative moving forward. So let's go ahead and get started with um, the secret of guerrilla marketing is pretty much you have to be committed. You have to be persistent. Um, you definitely have to be invested in, in something. Um, and it actually, it's something that's going to allow you to look beyond your business. Uh, I mean, when we talk about, ooh, um, KFC and their secret, you know what, um, you know what ingredient, um, people normally figure things out. But for you as a business owner, the one thing is, is that if you're doing marketing and it's the exact same thing and the exact same post and it's going over and over, what we want to make sure that you do is that understand that that um, guerrilla marketing does require some thought process. Karen. Yeah, absolutely. In my business, we spend a lot of time on the strategy side before we ever do anything. It's what are we doing what is the options that make the most sense? And I'll walk you through that process in terms of the questions we ask ourselves. And Orlando's probably gonna yell at me and tell me that this is for a different slide, but I don't care. Um, take off my nerd glasses for a minute. Um, so the, the process that we walk through is in terms of, we start with the outcome we're looking for. So for us for example we have different buckets of clients so we might say we want more supplement clients we want more big pharma clients we want more of the abbots and johnson johnson's of the world whatever that outcome is and then we say we work backwards where are they hanging out how do we get access to the decision makers who are the decision makers and we ask ourselves all these questions to figure out and build that profile and then we step back from there and go, okay, so now what strategies would give us access to those people? So for example, we'll brainstorm and we never stop until we have at least 10 ideas because I promise you half of them are garbage, but it's just brain dump, come up with ideas, dump it out there. It might be crap, but it's part of this whole secret is like, you got to just be persistent. You got to be willing to go the mile with it. So is humor yourself, come up with, 10 bad ideas, one in there might be good. And then we test every idea with the concept of low hanging fruit, meaning is this gonna be easy to do? The low hanging fruit is the one you just walk up and pick. You don't need a stick, you don't need to climb a tree. You just walk up and pick it. Is it gonna be easy? And then the other question is, if it actually works, would it be a home run? Would this be like, you know, whatever your ideal client looks like, a million dollar contract? And if it would, then those two questions, we go down the list, is this low hanging fruit? Is this low hanging fruit? And we check off whichever, whichever of them are low hanging fruit. And then we go through the list. Is this you know, a home run if it works? Is this a home run if it works? And any of them that have low hanging fruit or home run, that's your sweet spot. You run with that. You start working on that right away. And I can't take credit for this. I learned this from a mentor of mine, David Finkel, many years ago, and I've been doing it for a long time and it really, really works. Um, so that's, that's the starting point for me in my business when we're looking at being committed and being persistent, the how behind it, that's my how. Yeah, and I think that that's the main thing is that you give yourself permission not to do things traditionally. Daniel. Yeah, um, just to give you a personal example of how we've been doing things, obviously with video, you know, you can do video about anything, right? You can give your services to anyone and, and do video for about just anything that's on the planet. But 
echoing what Karen said, you know, what we try to do is go for the long hanging fruit, right? And so we try to figure out based on our business model, what are the types of clients that is that we're going to benefit that are going to benefit from us the, the most the quickly the, the, the quickest way and at the same time, it's not going to take a lot of work on our part where it's not the best business solution, right? So what we try to do is number one, one of the uh, customer segments for us is um, businesses that have either retail establishments or online retail, right? So e-commerce. And we know that a lot more people even now more than ever are buying online. And so the biggest thing that's going to help a client with their customer convert better are product videos, right? Everybody has an image gallery on their products. Everybody has descriptions, but not everybody has product videos, right? And they're super effective. So what we try to do is we try to tailor a specific, almost create a product within our line of services saying, hey, we're going to provide product videos, right? Rather than say, hey, yeah, we can shoot a video for your business. We're, we're being highly targeted about it. And so the next step to that is start for us. In our case, we're going to start creating video ads that are going to target people who um, are interested in Shopify stores, in WooCommerce, people who have Amazon stores, and really look at the kind of tools that they look for the kind of things that they do and all the watering holes that they go to online and start targeting them in those aspects. And not only just, you know, blasting them with, with ads, it's really more about educating them and letting them know, Hey, did you know that your customers have a three, three, um, you know, three X more likelihood of converting if you had a product video, you know, that they can become more loyal customers. So we start educating them on the, on those aspects and we start leading them through, you know, a sign up form, a sales funnel, and that's how we start targeting specific clients for us in this case. And really, it's, it's just a matter of thinking, just like Orlando and Karen are saying, really thinking outside the box in terms of understanding the behaviors of your customers and putting yourself in their shoes. At the end of the day, you're a customer too, right? So you just have to really take that time to just have that, that thought experiment of where are my customers and where could my potential customers be? And reverse engineer from where that customer exists without knowing who you are all the way to, you know, knowing and understanding who you are as a, as a provider. Yeah. And I think that that's the main thing and pretty much that's the secret. You have to educate yourself and understand who it is that you're trying to reach before you actually create the, 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 the guerrilla marketing. Um, that's the, that's the main thing that I love about guerrilla marketing is that you give yourself permission to use your imagination. I create continuously. I sit back and when people come up and they ask me questions, Hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Let's do this. Let's do that. And I do believe that when all this said and done for a lot of us, that's what we love to do. The reason why I'm an entrepreneur is because aside from my free time, um, I think that the reason why I'm an entrepreneur is I love to create. I love to talk to other people and talk to Daniel. Hey, listen, have you thought about this? Or Orlando, what do you think about this? Or talking to Karen and, and, and talking to other people. But I think that that's one of the main things that you use your Im imagination. But imagine putting in your entire enthusiasm. People love to do business with people that they like, but people love to do business with people that they trust. And sometimes when it comes to guerrilla marketing, um, it gives your voice a something totally different as opposed to having that mundane, you know, repetitive voice that sometimes people are like, oh, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. I've heard this. I've seen that. And the great thing about this is, you know, to both uh, Daniel and Karen's point, it, it, it lets you create a memorable marketing that people can actually um, sit back and point out and talk. Hey, did you see that? You know, um, how many of you have actually seen the billboard? Those of you that are in South Florida, that when you're driving up uh, the turnpike and it's a billboard for a, an AC company and it says, your wife is hot. It's so memorable. It's memorable, you know? And I think that that's where it starts is using your imagination. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And for me, I'm a scientist by training. And so things are a little more, I wouldn't say difficult for me to be creative because I'm a writer um, and as a medical writer, I am creative, but my creativity is different than somebody who's more artistic. Um, somebody like Daniel who can get behind a camera and envision a whole video. 
can't envision that. But my creativity comes when I actually put things on paper uh, where I can imagine how we can do things differently. So um, I've been taught over the years by a very competent person in my business how to think in terms of everything being a system and a process. And when I think that way, then I can imagine where in the process we can change things. So recently we sat, we mapped out our entire marketing system beginning to end for a few different systems, processes of how we get clients in the door. And when we were able to do that, we use, you know, post-it notes and we did, here's, you know, step one, somebody does this in our company, step two, the potential client replies with this and we just map the whole thing out. And then we actually tried to put numbers to it. Now that's some crazy stuff because it was, okay, how many of these emails get responded to? And you would think the answer is 100%, but the truth is a few of them fall between the cracks. And we were trying to figure out what percentage of those are falling between the cracks. And a few of them, you know, we respond to the email, but then for whatever reason, it didn't make it into our CRM. So it never got put in our follow-up system. So when we were to map it out and put numbers on each step, percentage conversion rates, then we could actually see what was working and what wasn't working and what were drop points. And when we were able to then sit with that, the imagination part became, how do we fix this? Because sometimes in your business, you don't actually need more leads or more opportunities or more customers to walk in the door. You just need to convert more of those or to make more of them spend more money or to make more of them become long-term clients rather than one buy. And when we were looking at all those points, that's where the imagination came in. We were like, what if we do this here? What if we add this person on the phone list and make sure that they're doing X, Y, Z? And it just, it was brilliant because it's like, here's all the points where we can actually fix things. And it was like, our marketing was suddenly more effective. And anybody that came in the door, we kept them in the door rather than letting them walk back out proverbially. But um, that's the imagination part of this. Right. And see, and that's the thing that what you just talked about, Karen, you just said that to me and I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, because you think differently. And, and I think that that's where you, you were talking about the scientific aspect of it. As a business owner, when it comes to, I am more of the creative side where I can come in, I'm like, hey, have you thought about this? Let's add this. So I love the aspect to what you said about the brainstorming. You know what? Because that's what worked for you. And then you implement it accordingly, Daniel. So <clears throat> talking, listen to, listening to Karen, I kind of like reminisce on when I first started thinking about starting my own business, right? And it wasn't because I liked video. You know, if anybody asked, asked me, oh, you know, is it because you want to be artsy? You want to make movies? Not at all. For me, video has never been the goal. It's always been the tool, right? And so my mindset has always been, you know, I'll walk around, whether it's at the mall or whether it's at Disney or something. And, and the reason I mentioned Disney, I'll, I'll bring that up a little later, um, is because I always think, wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. I wonder if I could do it better. Or I wonder if I could do it differently. My mind is always thinking about that. And it, and it might not have anything to do with video, but I'm always thinking creatively on how I can offer something better or something different to other people, right? That's, that's more of the entrepreneurial mindset. For me, video has become my specialty and I use that as a vehicle and as a tool to get my message across. But at the end of the day, at the core of it, it's not video. It's really just that, that raw idea of like, what's going on in the world? What's going on in, in, in my corner of the world where, you know, how are they doing that? And, and for me, I'm always very observant of someplace like, like Disney World, right? For me, I, I, one of my idols is Walt Disney because, you, you know, you see a lot of uh, documentaries about him and a lot of like, you know, history, uh, uh, movies about him, where he just started, you know, making animation. And then from there, he moved on to, okay, how can I provide a more immersive experience for my customers, right? And then they created the parks. And after that, well, these people that are coming to the parks, they need somewhere to stay. So let's make hotels. And, and so it, you start to build upon what you created. And just like Karen was saying, 
understanding your uh, your customers' other needs and and expanding from that and providing them more services, you know, outside of what you originally intended for them, right? So it's really going in and 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 trying to think of what it is what is it that you're offering, what is at the core of your business, and then applying that in terms of what kind of marketing you can do. And so having that said, everything that, that we create, everything that we do, especially in our own business, everything has a story, right? And it's our job and our responsibility as business owners to let other people know why we started our business, why we decided to take it on our own, why we decided to take that leap of faith. And it's really because at one point we thought we could do something better or we could do something differently, right? And so it's really about taking a hold of that and building from it and connecting with people and connecting with your, with your clients on a human level. Cause that, that's really what always resonates with people is providing them that human and personal connection. Even if it's something that's not human and personal, but you're providing it to them and seeing, and seeing that passion come across is what's always going to make a more loyal customer. Yeah. And I will tell you that the great thing about this is I listen, I find humor in everything. So when I'm doing something, I have to add humor because if I don't, I don't believe that I'm being authentic to, to my brand, uh, the m and Media brand. So I love to educate and empower, but I think that that's the main thing that you use your imagination. You know what? And once you, once you use your imagination, you can actually start bo- focusing on the advantages. One advantage that everyone has that is listening to us right now is that you are an original. So I always say this, you know, um, you know, God created me an original, so I'm not going to die a copy. I don't want to mimic what other people are doing. I may want to read, I may want to study, and I may just want to make it better. And I think that that's the advantage is that each and every one of you has that originality about yourself. So when you come in and you engage with your customer, so what's going to set you apart? So when you come in and devise a, a guerrilla marketing strategy, it's coming in and realizing that at the first thing is that advantage, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, the second thing, it's maybe unique and memorable. Maybe it's coming in and, and creating, to Daniel's point, a video, highlighting, you know, what where you are at right now and saying, hey, right now, you know, during COVID, I've been working from home. I've been doing this. I've been doing X, Y, Z. And let other people share the great thing about um, everything that you do with guerrilla marketing. It, it's unconventional. There's nothing there that says, oh, well, I'm going to come in and put a brochure and put X, Y, Z. That's okay. Do a brochure. But what else are you going to add to that brochure to make it memorable? Or anything else that you may be doing? What's going to actually assist you in focusing on the advantages? And to Karen's point, she started talking about, you know, what, uh, working it backwards. I would encourage right now for yourself, what are the advantages of doing business with you? What is it that's going to set you apart from other people when it comes to what they're doing, when it comes to marketing and create something that's going to help you? You know, that just reminded me of something that happened on the weekend. My husband and I went out to pick up food and I don't go anywhere. I'm immune compromised, but I stayed in the car and we were waiting for the food to be ready for him to go inside and go get it. And while we're sitting in the car outside the restaurant, um, they had a Corona uh, poster and it just had the picture of the bottle and a beach and it said find your beach and he looked at it and he was like what the hell does corona have to do with finding a beach and i said but babe it's how you build a brand that poster doesn't do it very well but what they tried to do with their brand is dig deep what every brand needs to do which is you're not buying a beer you're buying an experience you want to feel good you want to feel like you're at the beach with friends having an awesome day and that's what Corona built their brand on. This is what people are actually buying when they pick up a Corona. They want to feel like they're just having that kind of a day. And of course it didn't convey well with that poster and just had a Corona on a beach that said, find your beach. It was, it was lost, but in the video ad, you get it. Um, and I think that's really what I try to teach people because like, for example, I sell medical writing. Sounds really boring and nerdy. It is. I read and write for a living. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Um, you know, and I tell people I write proposals for like getting government contracts. It's like watching paint dry. So, but what do I 
actually sell my customers. My cu customers aren't buying writing. If you come to me and you say, there's this government project that I want to bid on and I think that I could actually get it, but I'm not a proposal writer. Can you and your team help me, Karen? What are you buying from me? You're buying getting that million dollar contract awarded to you. If you come to me and you're a pharma company and your scientists are busy and they have documents that are backlogged on their, on their desk to be written up, when you come to me, you aren't buying writing. You are literally buying back your scientists' time because they have other things they need to be doing and we're going to write so that they can get back in the lab and do what they need to be doing. Or maybe they suck at writing and you need it written well and they don't write it well. So what are you buying from me? You're buying something that sells. Here's a marketing document that sells. We write marketing that sells. We write content that ranks. So it's not about the writing, it's about the benefit. And so I implore you to look at your business and figure out what you're actually selling. I've seen examples like um, way back in the day when people used to buy from, um, I don't know where they used to buy plane tickets from. I read this in a book and I can't remember the name, if it was Hotwire or one of those companies. What they sat and figured out for their brand is that people aren't buying cheap plane tickets. It wasn't, this is the website to get the cheapest plane ticket. It was, this gets you to your sister's wedding. This gets you to the family reunion. This gets you to be able to go visit that loved one that you might not have been able to visit if you couldn't find a ticket that was priced well. So it was getting you to the place you want to go to be connected with loved ones or to be connected with fun. And that was what they were really selling. And so I, you know, and my husband's a physician and we had this conversation about his business. What are you really selling? And he was like, you know, it's for patients to feel like a doctor is going to treat them as if they're family, that they can trust that they're in the best possible hands, the best possible care. So when they walk into his office or they come into his urgent care clinic, broken and beaten, <laughs> they know they're going to get treated as if it's their dad, their brother or whatever, taking care of them. That's what he's actually selling. He's not selling, hi, hey, I'm a doctor, right? So what are you actually selling? And that's the most important thing to think through when you're really going to start marketing in this guerrilla marketing style. You've got no time to waste. You've got to connect with your customer where they're at, showing them the benefit that you provide to them. Yeah. And to your point, Karen, I was thinking about that and this is how creativity comes in. Um, in this day and age, you know what, people are no longer patients. They're actually clients now because people are looking at the dollar sign. So imagine him coming in and just having a conversation or talking to and high, and actually showing the interaction that he has with, with, with a patient. This is how we treat our patients. You know what, not like a number, not like a, a, um, like a, a client, but because we really are concerned. Imagine doing a video and sending and having that go viral because that's what people want, something that's different, something that doesn't follow the norm. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is, um, I'll give you guys an example of one of our current clients. So uh, we have a local church who obviously when the pandemic struck, all the local churches, a lot of them closed down. So that particularly was uh, damaging for, for the church client that we have because they service the university across the street and they act as a student center for all the, for, for, for all the kids at, at the university. So what happened, you know, they're obviously their community. And once you disconnected that connection with your community, what were you going to do, right? So what we did is we offered them a few different ideas and strategies. Number one, we started doing live stream services, right? Live stream, live stream worship services. But at the same time, we started to create live streaming, uh, almost like talk show style events for them. So once a week, they'll do a talk show and it'll be anything from just random good news that's happening in the neighborhood and the community or, and it, it's evolved to now they have guest speakers, amazing impactful guest speakers from around the world They'll, they'll Skype in and they'll have this conversation. So they'll provide this amazing content for their, their in, you know, if we're talking about entrepreneurs, for their customers to be engaged. And on top of that, it's, it's, it's kept the connection going in a more digital direction 
but it still kept people thinking, well, you know, I'm still part of my parish. I'm still part of my church in this digital age. At the same time, to almost provide that same feedback loop, we uh, encouraged them to start doing sh social media challenges where they had their viewers and their audience and their parishioners engage in whether it was, you know, show us your prayer space or show us how you, uh, you know, try to keep your family active and engaged during during the, the quarantine. And so they submit those videos and then the church at the same time now puts up a collection of them and, and puts them out on their social media for everyone to see. So it's building this, this loyalty and this community and engaging with them. And, you know, I, I'm like looking at the points that Orlando has here and it's like, they're hitting almost all the points. They're doing something memorable. They're doing something unconventional, right? Cause you don't really see that going on these days. I, well, now more than ever. Um, they're building brand awareness because they're still engaging with their audience. They're actually building outside of what they normally did. And it's cost effective because at the end of the day, they're for a lot of it, they're using content from their own congregation to create more content. Right. So, um, that, that's something that I thought that that could be spread across any other business. There's, there's one, I'll leave you guys with some, with some homework. There's a company out there who they're called one wheel. They're an electric skateboard, but more so than the the other ones that looks like a skateboard, this one's just one big fat tire on an actual skateboard. What's interesting about them is that, you know, yeah, they'll sell you the skateboard, but what you are buying into is a community. It is so big. It's across the entire U.S. that you see people gather together in these huge groups, and it's like, any, anyone from, from any walk of life, you see all these different peoples from, from different backgrounds come together because they have this one product in common and they share it as, as a, a big family, right? And so that company was able to leverage that and build upon that and kind of provide the same feedback loop where now they're doing competitions, they're doing races, they're doing festivals, you know, uh, they're doing bar hopping events with everybody riding on these skateboards, right? And at the end of the day, they were just selling a product, just like if it were a bike, just like if it were anything else. But they were able to read their audience and their 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 customers and say, "There's something. There's a there's a value that we can add here that doesn't have to have a dollar sign." But indirectly, on the long term, it will. Yeah, and I think that I'm glad you said what you said. So, in essence, the church comes in, gives people an opportunity to share, gives them an opportunity to talk. You know what? So, in essence, you're building a community. So, how yeah. much? How much um, is the church, you know, what charging people to submit their information? And how much are people getting paid to submit? Nothing. So imagine starting a conversation. The thing is that when you come in and overthink the process, you have to keep it very practical. Start a conversation talking to your actual clients. Be conscientious that you don't have the answer. Um, get feedback. Hey, did you like this? Get by and convert them, attract ambassadors. Where we actually fail when it comes to marketing is that we're telling people, you know, what, what they need. You don't have to tell them what they need. They need to tell us what they want. The moment that you come in and find out specifically, then you can convert them and they will tell you what it is that they need when it comes to, to, to moving forward and so forth. You know, so I think that one of the main things is you, there isn't a right or wrong answer when it comes to guerrilla marketing. There's just an opportunity to be creative and to give people an opportunity to be part of the conversation. The conversation can be one-sided. And I think that that's what happens with a lot of marketing. Here's a car, buy the car, you know it, and walk away with the car. What happens in between when it comes to a business and how can you actually, you know what, just morph it into just having other people come in and say, I really love your brand. I love what your business done has done because you created a video. Um, and, and we are going to be showing you some examples um, and the different types of guerrilla marketing that's out there. Just want to make sure that we give you actually the foundation so that you can actually get the buy-in and have people get the buy-in as well. You know, one of the things that we do in my business is we've been really trying to start conversations with our clients more now than ever before because people actually have more time now that they're working from home, a lot of them. And so we, every opportunity we get, we try to get on the phone with them and get their feedback because here's the thing, they have already said yes. So we need to understand 
Why did they say yes? Where did they find us? What, you know, made that yes decision? Are they happy with the service we're providing? How could they be happier? How could we reach other people like them? Are they willing to leave a review? Do they know anybody else that could use our services? These are all really important questions. And by asking these questions, um, what we've been able to discern is some information on where we could find other clients like them. Hey, here's how I found you. I was doing a Google search for X, Y, Z keyword. Um, I was looking on this website and you were listed in that directory. I was searching on LinkedIn and I found your profile by typing this specific keyword. That information is invaluable. You know why? Because now we know what's working and what's not working and where to find more of that type of client. So if you're talking to your best customers, the ones that pay quickly, buy repeatedly, are no pain in the butt at all, you love working with them, and you ask them, how did you find me? How do I find more people like you? They will tell you the answer. So rather than going and trying 50 other things, they will just straight from the horse's mouth. And so for those of you who have seen some of you that have like restaurants, for example, you know, when your customers come in, that person at the cashier needs to ask them, how did you hear about us? Where did you find us? And if they're finding you on Yelp, if they're finding you on DoorDash, if they're finding you wherever, then that's where you need to be putting your time and energy. If they're finding you on Yelp, push getting more Yelp reviews so you're further up. You know, so it's wherever people are finding you, however you could find more people like that, that's your guerrilla marketing strategy. That's your low hanging fruit. That's your home run strategy. So you run with that. And then the, in a way you're building community too, because you're talking with people and you're building a relationship with those customers and relationship is king because then these people know you, they trust you, they like you and they keep buying from you. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's one of the main things, you know, um, Daniel, I know that you have a, a client, you're in a client office to do some stuff, but I, I know you want to share some stuff before you hop off. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I actually have to get on a production in about 15 minutes, but um, yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing is really connecting with, with your customers on a human level. Uh, I've noticed that across different products and different brands, um, that that has always been like the, the standard, really being able to resonate with with your clients on on a human level and, and really understanding what their human needs are uh, is really what helps you to, you know, convert and gain their loyalty on a long term. Um, if anybody has any questions that they want to ask me, um, my email is Daniel at thecreativeparticle.com. Orlando will put it up. Um, yeah. It was definitely a pleasure uh, talking with you guys today and sharing ideas. Um, Joel, I, I message you. Let me, let me know when you want to have some digital coffee. <laughs> but otherwise, thank you guys. Um, I'll be seeing you uh, for the next workshop. My, and thank you, Daniel. Um, appreciate it. I do have his email there. Um, one thing that I actually wanted to make sure is, you know, as you, you, you build that community, you harness the power of the public. Um, how many of you are actually solopreneurs? Thank you. Um, how many of you are solopreneurs and you're just running the business by yourself? So it's a lonely journey. And I think that that's one of the main things that you build partnerships. And sometimes when you start your, your marketing, you're building a relationship, you're making it interactive, you're making it fun. What you're doing is that a lot of these, these practical suggestions, and like I said, I'm gonna give you some examples um, you know, later on, but I want you to make sure that you understand that I'm looking at some of the, the businesses that are out there and, and my, my mind is racing. I, I know that someone was talking about um, Henley Garcia about having a, a smart home, setting up smart homes. I would have a field day with creating content and creating videos and creating visuals for people to actually see what a smart home looks like. Um, we have access to so many things, but I think that sometimes we may tend to overthink things and the best way that you can captivate someone's you know attention and convert them is by harnessing the power of the of the public how many of you have actually shared a video or, or or posted something that you're not getting paid for but you liked it something that was funny something that you found amusing and i think that that's one of the main things that you want to make sure that your communication is interactive and that it's not the whole thing 
you know, um, and we will share uh, Daniel's email at the end. I think that one of the main things is making sure for each and every one of you, as you start looking at some of these examples, and once you get the email with the presentation, look over it and make sure that you design and create something that is going to meet the needs of your customers. And it shows and highlights the difference in your company and what makes you stand apart. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, I know Orlando has a lot of examples he can share of this. I really learned a lot from his brother, Eric, and Eric's son about harnessing the power of the public. And I love when we teach using stories because then people can see how do I do this in my business? And I learned so much from them because they built a community. So they have a cigar um, company and it became, we don't sell cigars, we sell an experience. And it's a certain type of guy that likes or brand of cigars and get these guys together and have an event and they have their specific type of drink they like to drink and the cigar that goes with it and let's hang out and let's have fun together because we are the guys that like this type of cigar so it's like you create this click or clique depending where you're from where i'm from we call it clique um <laughs> and all of a sudden, these guys that may have never met in life, may have never hung out together, are now besties over cigars. And they've done something amazing with their brand where they, they travel and they create these events and they connect with people and on their social media, it's like a tight knit community of these guys who love their cigars. And how genius is that, right? Because there's too many cigar brands that just sell cigars. <laughs> Yeah. So don't just sell anything. It has to be that you know your people and you bring them together. So for example, part of my business is that we do a lot in the supplement arena. And we've done so much in the supplement arena for so many years, not just marketing, but um, helping so many companies. That eventually, we spun off a separate brand from the company just for the supplement industry. And it's called Make a Supplement. And it's for startups that are trying to make a new supplement a lot of them are just they're not scientists they don't know what ingredients and what dosages and how do they test it before they go spend tens of thousands manufacturing it and one of the things that i'm doing this week with that brand is just a live q a webinar these are startup businesses they have a ton of questions they're stuck on something i guarantee you and just volunteering my time, me and another business owner who also helps supplement brands with marketing, his specifically works with funnels. And we just said, Hey, let's get together and help these guys. And we just pushed it out to our list. Hey, we're going to be live on a zoom call, jump on. I think it's like Thursday at one or whatever. And we'll just be there to answer your questions just to be with you. And sometimes your customers just need a little bit of your time, your attention, your um, space and you create this space that's safe for them to come and meet each other. Because now how many startup supplement businesses don't have a clue and they're struggling with something that another business owner has already figured out. They probably can answer each other's questions. I might not have to answer anything, but it's creating that container where they can all come and hang out and talk and ask questions. And I've been getting emails like crazy. I'm already registered. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. And this is what your customers need. They need somewhere to connect and be a part of something. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that because when we actually launched that, we did the Lazona Palooza and it was a small group of people and it went from small group to, to hundreds. Um, and we just started marketing and, and, and our brand, and they started marketing the cigar brand, but it's the power of the public. So we actually created a, a Facebook a group where everyone is there highlighting, showing pictures of the Espinosa brand, where they're at, what they're doing. And I think that that's what it is, is you, you need to give people permission to take ownership of your brand, because once they feel as though they have ownership of your brand, they're going to be the ones marketing it for you. And then it just makes it go virtual. I think this is one of the easiest things right now when you talk about practical tips doing a webinar, blogging, videos, being interactive, live stream. Um, you see a lot of people that are coming in and they're actually doing Facebook Live or they're doing Instagram Live or everybody's doing something different. 
you can do that, but what is it that's going to actually allow you to do something that, that, that's going to make you stand out? You know, talk about something different to Karen's point. Um, listen, I've participated in, 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 um, in videos and, and, and webinars where we're talking about something totally different, but I do believe that as you move forward, just test the waters. Don't sit idle waiting to do something. You need to come in and start giving people an opportunity to share, to communicate, to talk why. Because what we're going through is right now, people may say, oh, but you don't understand my industry. I may not understand your industry. You understand your industry. And since you understand your industry, you can actually be creative to sit back and say, hey, I'm going to come in and test the waters with, with a, a, a webinar, or I'm actually going to do a video. And sometimes you may say, but I only had three people show up. But that was three people that you could test the waters. And maybe people from there, they like it, they share it, and they're asking you for more things. But you need to definitely go live right now when it comes to the marketing because what a lot of what uh, these small companies were doing in the past, now the big companies are doing this. A lot of big companies weren't doing webinars. They were not doing a lot of the things that, that we as, as entrepreneurs were doing. So I think this is a time right now to be different to emulate, but to actually take ownership. If you're not talking, you know what, then who's actually going to talk for you? Yeah, I really like this. I have so much to say on this slide that I'll have to put a lid on it. But one an other example, I always love to use examples because it really resonates. I could see how, you know, it connects with people's businesses. One example for me recently, I was talking in a small business group I'm a part of. And we meet monthly and we just mastermind on whoever's having a problem kind of throws their problem out to the group and we help each other. And a problem that was thrown out to the group by one of the members, long time members. So him and I were tight. So I didn't offend him with this. His problem was in his business where he's 61 and um, the youngest person in their office is like 50 something. Um, that young person's son suggested that they might want to um, get some social media and uh, get their name out there. And he was so against that. He said, you know, people have done business with us for 20 something years because word of mouth, you know, Karen uses my business and she likes it and she tells somebody else. And I'm like, yes, that's true. And he actually is the company I use for my phone system for my business. So everybody in my business, our phones are all connected and we have this fancy schmancy, even if nobody's in the office, it's on your phone, it's on your laptop or whatever, uh, voice over IP. Yes, I use his service and anybody that's asked me, I do word of mouth say, yeah, here's my friend Phil's phone number, call him, he'll hook you up. But what I explained to him is in this world, People do not just do business with you on word of mouth anymore. I said, if you think so, you are fooling yourself. People will say, oh, so you said Phil Liberty, Universal Telecommunications. He won't mind that I put his name out there. <laughs> hey, might get him some business. If some of you need voice over IP, call Phil. Um, nobody's going to be like, oh, well, Karen told me, call Phil. What are they going to do? First thing, I promise you. Phil Liberty, Universal Telecommunicate, they're going to look you up. And here's the thing, to people under the age of 30, which is what most of the new entrepreneurs are, if you have no blog for me to read, no social media accounts for me to peruse, you are not a real business. So that buying decision wasn't made when I said, call Phil. That buying decision was made when you Googled and there was nothing, <laughs> you were like, this ain't a real company. This is a Mickey Mouse company. They don't have anything for me to look at. I have to pick up the phone and call them to get any information. Who does that? It's 2020. So what I told Phil is you need to just grab your phone and record some videos. Hey, you know, make a social media account for the business. Hey, I'm Phil. I'm one of the owners here at Universal. And here I am on site with a customer and we're blah, blah, blah for them doing X, Y, Z. It doesn't have to be fancy on your phone. Upload it to LinkedIn. Upload it to YouTube. Upload it to wherever. All your social media accounts. 
And you know what? After I had that conversation with him, he said, Karen, I am sold. <laughs> you just sold a 61 year old on why I need social media in order to grow my business. And he's like, I'm not even trying to really grow my business, but just to continue doing the business I've always done. But with this younger generation, I see why I need content why I have to have video, why I have to have social media posts, why I have to have blog posts. He's like, I didn't have a clue. He's like, I've been having this argument for 10 years and I didn't have a clue. So that's one story I wanted to share because that one hit very hard. Yeah. And, and listen, and, and one of the things that, that, that I, I'm, I'm looking at and I'm like laughing because I'm thoroughly enjoying the mere fact of the conversation. Like we've done these, these webinars and we tell people to put their business on you know what, for, for months now. And this is the first time that people have actually taken the aspect of build relationships and using it. I'm looking at the conversation between Miguel and, 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 and Bruni, you know what, uh, and I'm going back and forth and I'm like, that's how you start designing and creating things. You don't come in and sit idle, build the relationship first. And then once you have the conversation and you have the relationship, you can build. That's a way of, of, of using guerrilla marketing, doing something different and thinking outside the box. So, so Absolutely. Let's, you know, I will build on that because, you know, one of the things that Orlando taught me back in 2016, he was like, Karen, you have such a dynamic personality. Stop hiding behind your desk because I did at that time, since that's what my business mostly does, digital marketing. And I didn't really get out. But part of my guerrilla marketing strategy now is to meet people. And it doesn't mean I go to every useless networking event and meet 500 realtors that are trying to help me buy a house that I don't want. Um, it means that I'm very targeted. Where would the people that I want to meet for my business, where would they hang out? And sometimes it's very specific conferences or events, but I go there knowing who I'm looking to meet. And I make it a point to walk away with people's phone numbers, people's email addresses. And now in this day and age with COVID, it's even easier because all those events have gone online. I don't even have to leave home. Sometimes I don't even have to get dressed up because I'm like, well, I don't have to turn my video on if I don't want to. Or so I turn my video on and I'm in like a tank top and shorts. But I can get on there and I can meet people and I can get participant lists, some places that I attend events, they'll email, email out the whole participant list. Here's the name of the person, the company they're with, and their email address. How much easier is it than that? Hey, I saw you were on the FDA small business fair that I was on just now. Are you interested in connecting? Super simple. Um, we have a whole LinkedIn campaign that we do, um, and we use an automated software called Ulink. And it's a paid service, it's not um, free, but you know, genius. It just, I figure out who I wanna connect with, the types of people, and it sends out, I create the templates for the messages and it just pushes them out. And I don't even have to look at it, that's guerrilla marketing. So there's so many opportunities, meet people, don't ever go to an event and not find somebody that could be a customer, could be a partner, could, help you in some way you guys could support each other in some way you could exchange customers like you might be in a similar industry and the person is buying from you might also buy from that person hey you guys can exchange an affiliate commission even you send a customer to me and they buy i'll send you 10 percent. this is the kind of stuff i do in my business all the time so you have a whole tribe of people out there looking for work for you just so many ideas so so many ideas so little time <laughs> Yeah, I, I, and, and that's a great thing. And, and the funny thing is that I, I was looking, like I said, a lot of people, this is how ideas are birthed and so forth. And, and it's funny because I was looking at, at, at Antoinette, um, you know, and, and when you posted something, you know, um, so, so, so the, Antoinette, this message is for you. Okay, so if you're looking at me, I said, you need to communicate more with other people. Why? Because you teach sign language. All right, so that's for you why. I have two deaf cousins. So I know sign language, but at the end of the day, sometimes we do not show people or tell people what it is that we're doing because we're afraid to communicate. You do not have time to be uh, fearful when it comes to your business. So these are some of the examples. I'm not gonna go into all of the explanations, uh, but I wanna show you the visuals of what it is. So you have the undercover, the stealth marketing, and this is considered devious uh, marketing. So the public actually you're being marketed to 
without knowing. So when you see Mac and, and Microsoft, but these are the examples, the best examples. If you look at undercover stealth marketing, when it comes to guerrilla marketing, you have the movie, uh, the Fiat from uh, the Italian job. You have E.T. with Reese's peanut butter cups and um, Reese's pieces, actually. And then you have FedEx in um, the movie Castaway. So yeah, that's not a Fiat. That's a Mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Thank I'm, you. I'm a car person. I'm so offended. My sister actually drives a Mini Cooper S and she would shoot you. <laughs> that's it. Wait a second. Okay. Okay. I've got another picture. That's the reason why. The Mini Cooper would... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for calling me out. So hey, when, that's what I do. That's why Brian is like done with me. <laughs> so, so when you look at this, but this is what stealth, stealth marketing is. So when you talk about a movie or anything that's out there, they're actually paying for this uh, public, um, this, um, you know, product placement. The astroturfing, the astro, this method involves people paying people to create the impression of a popular movement. So if you look at this Comcast, Comcast actually paid people to go to a hearing to talk about how they can actually, that they were, they needed to actually allow Comcast to come in and, and, and um, create this, this bigger wide cell of the company. So that's why I actually use the uh, NBC logo. Uh, but um, what they did was they paid people to make the illusion that people wanted what they were selling. It's the same thing with McDonald's in, in Japan. What they did was that they paid a thousand of their employees and people to form a line because McDonald's was actually launching the quarter pounder. Okay, so that's what astroturfing is. This is my favorite and this is where the fiat comes in. The ambush marketing, this method is, is, method is where a company attempts to ambush and undermine. So if you look at the, remember the iPod Nano? So if you look at the iPod Nano that they came in with different colors, Rona, a, a, a paint company, came in and they just actually put a billboard, a big, you know, what sign underneath. Uh, but my favorite one is look at the Fiat. So Fiat knew that Google Maps was actually in the neighborhood taking pictures and they went and parked their car in front of Volkswagen. <laughs> so love it. That for me, and that's where the Fiat comes in. But then you look at in Australia at the Galaxy, um, what they did was that um, Apple was coming in with one of their versions of the phone. So um, Samsung Galaxy came in and created a kiosk and started selling their phone for uh, cheap, dirt cheap. What happened is that they stole clients and customers from Apple. And right now they are one of the biggest competitors, but a lot of it they've surpassed, you know, what in sales uh, in certain areas. So the one thing is, is making sure that you take advantage of what other people are doing. Um, and if you look at the, uh, it's a chalice, not a glass. And then a beer company says, who uses the word chalice? So if you- And they put it right under there. So it's, it, one of the things I tell people, and we talked about this in another um, webinar that we did for SBDC in the past, is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And so there's some businesses that don't even have a website, but you're trying to sell a product, for example. Well, there's eBay, there's Amazon. You can send your product to Amazon. It's fulfilled by Amazon. Now it can get shipped out with Prime. There's, you know, there's so many different options, right? You've got, um, I use Nextdoor, which is, you know, in your local town or city or neighborhoods or whatever. There's Craigslist. There's so if you don't have a website, you don't have traffic, how do you sell a product? You use somebody else's traffic, Amazon, eBay, Craigslist. So it's the same thing. That's ambush marketing too in a different way because it's using what's already there to sell. And so, you know, for a brand new business or a business that's struggling, where are your customers currently buying something from that you can just add on to? Not like a me too, but like, let's say you were a restaurant. And you know that your customers are buying, I don't know, groceries from a certain place. And how do you get that place to market you? And maybe there's a small grocery store that's willing to put a billboard. Oh, you know, or put out a coupon, eat at this restaurant for, you know, but just be creative. This is where the creative um, idea comes back is how do you find a way to piggyback on where people are already looking, where people, I mean, look at that. It's like, the giant chalice sign billboard is already up. So they just put theirs underneath it, like two buildings down. 
right? Because people were already looking. So why not put theirs in the same place? And how do you, um, you know, do the same thing? I just love this idea of ambush marketing and just piggybacking. Yeah, and I think that's the main thing. And now you have the ambient marketing. This method is used to create brand recognition without necessarily pushing its product. So if you look at Duracell, and if you look at this, actually the bathroom, you know, you're up, you see the gentleman going to the men's bathroom and you see the women, you know, following with the ax spray, you know, um, something that's simple. And if you look at the McDonald's coffee, it's over what? Manhole. So the main thing is look at what's out there, what's available, what can you do? Uh, this was actually one of my favorite and it's one of the hardest ones, uh, experimental marketing. It, it's hard to actually identify, but the experience is out there. So these are two companies that actually did the best Sprite. What they did was in Brazil, they actually just created showers. So people are going in and standing under, you know, at a Sprite fountain and people are actually, you know, what just, uh, you know, what uh, rinsing off the sand and so forth. One of my favorites was Ikea. Ikea actually had a contest because they were, hey, where do you, where would you like to stay at uh, when it comes to Ikea, what section? And people started talking. Wouldn't it be great to come in and be able to spend a night in Ikea? They saw what customers were writing and they created a contest to give people an opportunity to stay in an Ikea for an evening, for a night. That's the aspect of the creating and that's where it actually assists and helps you. So these are some examples and um, uh, Brianna's actually putting a, a, a survey so please feel free to go and, and, and write, you know, share your thoughts and so forth. But I wanted to actually give you some visuals of some of my favorites that's out there. Um, some I won't have to explain, but if you look at when the Superman movie came out in 2013, an elevator, a simple elevator opening up, you know, where you see the, the Superman, you know, logo, uh, chest, uh, Nikon, walking through an airport, and right there you have someone on a red carpet and you have the cameras, you know what, as if you were the, the superstar, uh, you were actually the, 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 the star. Um, this was one of my favorites, the Alzheimer's erasers. You know, your memories, save them. So imagine giving something to a client like that, that's gonna make you memorable for those of you that are in, in, uh, in um, provide products. Um, these are certain things that you can actually uh, create that's different that helps you stand out uh, dollar shave club one of my favorites the videos if you have not watched the videos you have to look at their videos i signed up to it i was paying the monthly fee and i actually wasn't even shaving but i just loved everything um that it was just an opportunity for me to come in and say yep i'm gonna buy and then i just ended up not shaving but the videos great rock station free air guitar take one and this was happening when people were playing the air guitar and so forth with, I think, one of the uh, video games and so forth. But this is another great run. Krispy Kreme Donuts in South Florida. How many of you actually stop when you see a sign that says hot now? I live in West Palm. There's no Krispy Kreme up here. But I used to live in Atlanta. And that's when I discovered the hot now sign. And I was like, what is this? You know? <laughs> Instant Krispy Kreme customer. And if you look at that, what did that cost them? Nothing to put the sign. It's like you're driving when you're in North Miami or I'm in North Miami and you look at it and if the sign's not up, you keep driving. But if you're coming back and you see it, you start calling everyone and their mother. You want a box? Yep. yep. And if you're, if you're the kind of person like Orlando or myself, you don't just buy a box for you. You buy a box for somebody else and drop it off for them too, right? Exactly, exactly. It's like, hey, listen, are you home? Okay, drive by. So that's one of the main things. And this is my, one of my absolute favorite. And this was just an article, or actually was published in, in, in a magazine. To all those who use our competitors' products. And that, you one's, that one's brilliant. That's like when you look at it, for me, do something that's different. That's like, that was like a mic drop when you see that one. Um, even for the ice bucket challenge, how many of you actually did the ice bucket challenge? And people were just saying in urgency, you know what, hey, now ALS was able to actually come in and raise funds. But if you look at the numbers there, doing something different. A lot of people came in and tried to mimic the, the same thing, but this had the biggest effect that people were willing to come in and do it and put ice over their, their, their heads, you know what, and people challenging other people. 
okay? Now, this one, this is actually one of my favorites in 2019 when Facebook did the 10-year challenge. And the funny thing is, is that people were just uploading. I'm like, ooh, you're helping the FBI. That's awesome for face recognition. But this was actually my favorite. <laughs> this was actually my favorite. If you look at this one, <laughs> you know what? People genius. Use I should, I need to save this for my son because he's a huge Aquaman uh, fan and I always call him Aquaman because he has long hair. So yeah, I'm going to save this one for him. But something that's different, something that's memorable, that was chained, it, that was shared thousands of times and this was actually a really fa a good favorite of mine. This is actually the Palmetto here in South Florida um, and you can see the 10-year challenge, nothing has changed. Uh, so forever <laughs> under construction forever it's under construction um i'm just adding some humor to this like i said earlier but if you look at all of this what does an entrepreneur do you watch tv you read you observe you ask questions you listen you do things differently and you think outside the box um i know that we took a, a little bit extra time i wanted to make sure that we went through all of this um but if you have any questions, um, you know, please feel free. We'll spend some more time talking to you. Um, I, I did want to go ahead and and um, and also emails there so that you can have it there. Uh, feel free to, to actually ask questions if you have any. If you don't, reach out to Karen, reach out to myself. Um, we are doing a, a webinar on Thursday on um, Breathe Life Into Your Brand. And that's going to be focusing more so on your actual brand. Uh, your, your, your colors, um, what they mean, the psychology behind it, uh, what logos uh, mean with hidden messages, but everything that entails a brand and how to actually uh, be able to use that as a foundation when you do go out and market and so forth. Um, so if, if there are um, any questions, please ask. Thank you to everyone that actually participated um, and that joined us. It was great to have you uh, on behalf of the SBDC you know, we want to thank everyone that registered and when they participated. Uh, thank you, Karen, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Brianna, for joining us as well. Um, the slides are going to be shared. We did record this. Brianna will be sending out an email. Um, the main thing we wanted to make sure to do was just think, um, think beyond the norm. Uh, we're living in, in, in a different time right now. So give yourself an opportunity to do things that's different. Don't do the same thing over and over again. You know, um, I think that that's one of the main things that you have to do as, as individuals and as business owners. Give yourself permission to be different. Give yourself permission to be creative. Um, when people come up to you and they're telling you, hey, I can get you to be number one, you know, at, uh, on Google. Um, you know what, ask why and, and if that's really what you need. Um, but be willing to step out of your comfort zone and then talk and, and, and address and communicate with other people. Um, There's two people have their hands up in the, in the participants list, Linda and Larry. I don't know, Brianna, if you want to unmute them for them to um, be able to ask their questions. Yes. I can see a question typed. Yeah. And Linda, uh, you're with us right now. If you want to unmute yourself. And I don't know if you just had your hand up because you were high-fiving us or if you wanted to say something. I have asked her to unmute. Okay. Okay. Well, if she still has a question, she will. And there's also Larry that has his hand up. I have selected him as well. All right. And, no. and Larry... The question I had was about, um, you know, amb is, is ambush marketing ethical? You know what the thing is right now that, um, and which this is what I share with a lot of people. Would I personally do something like that? No. Um, one of the things that you can actually uh, look at what they've done is when they have um, the boat show, whenever they have a boat show in, in, in South Florida, I, I do know that they had some, some uh, models that came in and they were actually marketing their brand without actually paying. The reason why I use that as an example is for people to understand what's out there and what's happening. Would I do something like that personally? Probably not. 
but it is an option. So um, I, I guess it would go more so with your morals and what you believe in, Larry, um, mm -hmm. and where you stand, you know? Um, and the opportunities that are available to you too. And it depends on the type of business you're marketing and what that opportunity looks like where you can jump in and market your brand in a space. I mean, it is one thing when you're doing something funny and everybody's laughing. It's another thing if you're, you know, really insulting another brand to just kind of one up be yourself and you're doing it basing, basically stepping on their toes. So it's, you know, it's looking for those opportunities. And what we're really trying to promote today is a creative mind thinking and processing and having a, a way of thinking through all your options and seeing the opportunities that maybe you wouldn't have seen before because some of these examples open your eyes. And so if you see an opportunity where you think you could come in and ethically do it, then by all means, take that, take the opportunity and run with it. But we definitely aren't saying do something that's not ethical and not moral and is going to really hurt somebody else's brand that has spent marketing dollars. Yeah. That is your question, Larry? Yes, it did. Okay. And listen, and thank you. And thank you for bringing that up. Like I said, you know, there were so many examples that were there and I've seen some, and to Karen's point, there's some that actually, you know what, um, even with the ambush, there's companies that actually have come together and joined forces to come in and make it look like it's an ambush, but actually they actually had, had planned it. Um, so there's a lot of examples out there. And if you have an opportunity, go online and research uh, and look at some other examples. I didn't put every one of them that's there because I didn't think that we just didn't have enough time. But, but thank you to everybody, you know what, uh, for your kind words. Uh, we are doing another one uh, Thursday, um, breathe life into your brand. Um, and don't be strangers if you have questions. Um, a lot of you have actually reached out to us when it comes to uh, questions, emails, and so forth. Uh, we don't want you to feel as though you're alone navigating this process. So uh, feel free to communicate with us, all right? So if there isn't any other questions, you know what, thank you so much. Brianna is going to be sharing the PowerPoint presentation and the presentation is being recorded. So thank you so much everyone and, and keep using your imagination.